In terms of proper handling, of course you always want to unplug the computer, drain the power before opening it. You always want to ground yourself. Memory is very susceptible to static electricity and it's very easy to take one out. Now, you want to move around as little as possible. Again, you don't want to generate static. I'll lay the module in a static safe packaging on the computer power supply just to make sure everything's safely discharged. Make sure you always handle it by the edges. You don't want to touch any of the clips, any of the chips, any of the contacts. You just want to hold it by the very corners and edges. And now you'll be able to put it inside the computer without any problems. When working on a computer, of course, it's nice to know how much memory is in the computer itself. So we need to know how much, and our next question might even be how much more can we put in. So for now, let me show you two quick methods to determine if a machine is already booted up, uh, how much memory is in the system. Now, I'm using Windows XP, and for the most part, these methods will work for any NT-based platform, which includes NT, Windows 2000, XP, 2003, whatever you happen to be working on. Now, on my desktop is something called My Computer. You can right-click on that, and you can come down here to Properties. And under the section called Computer, you'll see what processor you've got, at least what the speed is. And below that, you'll see how much memory is installed on the machine itself. Now, do realize that sometimes when you come into this screen, you'll see System, you'll see Registered To, and you'll see Computer, and this will be completely empty. Sometimes on uh, machines, it'll take it about five to five to ten seconds at most to kind of query for this information and fill it in. So if you come to this screen and it's blank, just give it a couple seconds and you'll eventually see the information that you're hoping to see. One of the other ways you could find out how much information is on a machine or how much memory is on a machine is you can go to Start, Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and down to something called System Information. Within System Information, on the Summary page, you'll see if I bring the scroll bar down just a little bit, you'll see the total physical memory and how much available physical memory is usable by your applications. It'll give you virtual memory specs and the available virtual memory specs. Uh, Virtual memory uses something called a page file. Now we're getting a lot more into operating system specifics, so that's later on in the course. But you'll see the page file space and exactly where that page file is. All of these are very related numbers. So again, you can find out on system properties or the property sheet of my computer, or you can go to system summary in system information. In front of you is some memory modules and a motherboard. And I've left the board up here just to demonstrate that memory modules are all different shapes and sizes. And you can see that if you really look at what's in front of us. But just to show you, you'll see this clearly wouldn't be able to fit. So most of the time, it's pretty hard to get the wrong one in there. However, um, you do have to pay attention to the PC specifications with memory. You always want to check the website or whatever documentation you have from the manufacturer. Now, this particular case is one of the first popular memory modules, and this is a PC100. And it's a certain shape and size and a certain speed, thus the PC100. And it has to be very specific to the motherboard that it's going in. Now, this is another example of PC100. It looks pretty similar. But you'll see here, I can take exactly what type of memory off that label, so I know what I'm working with. But in this particular case, we don't have anything on here on this particular label that tells me what I'm working with. We do have part numbers, and the part numbers are something I'll have to go to the uh, manufacturer of the memory it themselves. Same thing goes from here. I know this is compact memory out of a compact machine, but its labeling mechanism really doesn't tell me what it is I'm working with. Again, I'd have to look that part number up and see what Compact tells me. These are examples of a memory module that'll go into a laptop. As you can see, it's much, much smaller, and our next demo will actually be the inside of a laptop and what memory goes in it. But also, there's a label here, my favorite label. This is Crucial.com that we've mentioned. They have a free memory scanner, and it will tell you exactly what's inside your machine and all the different possible combinations of memory you can put in there, including the maximum amount of memory that your board wants. 
uh, all the memory is specific to the motherboard and there will be a maximum. Some machines can't take more than one or two gigs. Some of the newer machines will max out at four gig. It'll also tell you how many bays you have, if any of the bays are empty, and how you need to put the memory in. Some PCs work better with what we call paired memory, which means you want two of the exact same modules side by side in these bays for optimal performance doesn't mean it won't work with just one module in all cases, but for better performance it wants to see two, even if they're smaller, um, memory modules put on the motherboard itself.